So how I think about it is when you start a bull market, you own Bitcoin, then you start overweighting ETH. And then what happens is everything that's riskier starts going up more. So these are things that are earlier in their adoption cycle. And then the super risky stuff like NFTs. So that's how bull markets always work. So what I did is I said, listen, I'm going to own some Bitcoin and some ETH. And I, over time, have moved more of my allocation to ETH. But I bought a basket of stuff. I said, I don't know whether Polkadot, Cardano, Solano, whatever is going to outperform. So I just did a basket equally weighted. And then I've been mm. watching it. And so it's done really well. Um, I put it on the beginning of the year. It's up, I don't know, 150% or so. Um, and now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to start concentrating the bets in the ones that I think in this last quarter, where I think the big bull market lies, mm. those outperformers are the ones you really want to back. So, you know, we've had Charles Hoskinson a few times on Real Vision. I like the project. I think it's very interesting. We really need to see more network adoption. Yeah. So it's early stage for me still. So, you know, the price is going up, it's doing well. There's a big community behind it. So that gives you one side of the network. We need to see more use cases outside of the Ethiopia case that's being talked about a lot. So, you know, I own some and I'm just waiting to see really, is it going to start getting uh, a lot of traction, people building stuff on it? You know, I know people are waiting for the smart contract side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it's not the biggest outperformer in this cycle. Um, but, you know, if it survives this cycle and continues to get adoption, it'll probably do very well in the next cycle. Fortunately, we, I think we totally agree with each other. XRP is a great risk reward, right? The lawsuit, we've seen every lawsuit, every single one has been a fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone. A slap on the risk because everybody's actually cleared up after the event anyway. And these were events were a while ago, you know, BitMEX, that's happening. Um, we're going to see all of this. So I think it's going to be a slap on the wrist, but it could have looked like it's security. There'll be no admission of guilt on either side. Mm -hmm. There'll be a payment of a fine and then XRP is, is free to run. What's interesting about XRP is there is quite a lot of use cases. Now, I know a bunch of Bitcoin people hate it. It's not decentralized enough. I don't care. It's, you know, are people using it? Um, yes, a lot more than most people realize. And what's amazing about this setup is you can't buy us on any of the exchanges. And yeah. it's not in the Bitwise ETF. The Bitwise ETF is now a billion. Uh, the Bitwise index is, you know, the top 10 index is a billion dollars. So the moment XRP is freed, they have to buy a few hundred million dollars of it, as everybody else can, because the exchanges will have it back. So you're setting up for a hell of a nice run if this clears up. Worst case, it doesn't. You know, worst case is, let's say, 50% downside. Best case is 10x from here. So remember, the Bitcoin, the Coinbase IPO, remember, buy the rumor, sell the fact, was the yep. exact high of Bitcoin to the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Which is why I think 2.0 will be to the day. Yeah. And maybe the, a Ripple one will be the same. You know, they're all, it's all kind of, it's how markets work. Solano, I think, is the, I, I, I wrote an article about this this weekend. I've been looking at it, wasn't sure what to do with it. And then I think it's the, it's the ETH of this cycle. Wow. Remember the ETH of the last, you know, ETH was the one that became the big, yeah. the big new thing. I think it's this because the pedigree of all the people involved in it, the speed of adoption is ridiculous. I mean, it's it's growing faster than ETH did yeah. at that point in the cycle. The number of application, the ecosystem is. It's like somebody just sent me a chart of the ecosystem. There's like 300 people already working with Solana. It's like, okay, this is real. And this is happening at a speed none of us can get our heads around. It's kind of like everybody wanted Cardano to happen. Is that actually happening in Solano right now? As you, as you say, doesn't mean uh, Cardano doesn't over time, but Solano looks like it's going to win this, you know, this cycle. So what other coins, uh, you know, what, what coins can we be looking at, do you think, that could be the next Solano or the next Cardano or any other coins you... you, you... I've... I... I've kind of like, I own a bunch of DeFi stuff and I'm not that interested in it. It'll go up and it's it's interesting because, you know, it's great. They're disrupting the financial system, but I've been in the finance system for 30 years. So yeah. I don't really want to invest in another new finance system. So really what I've got interested in is community tokens. 
That, I think, is going to be the big one. And I don't think it's going to be the big one for this cycle. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the thing. Look back in five years' time and go, oh, my God. There was zero chance you will not tokenize your community. There's zero chance Real Vision will not tokenize. There's zero chance Disney will not tokenize its franchises and maybe Disney itself. You know, there's, Facebook is already tokenizing mm. via the app. So right now, there's only one or two platforms to buy. And one of them is Rally. Um, mm. The other one is Chili's, which is tokenizing right. soccer clubs and sports teams. So there's not actually much there. So if you want to express your view, those are the platforms. We'll get more over time as other people. Flow is probably another one, the Dapper Labs product, Flow. Um, so that's where I really think you can find bargains.